Hello everyone and welcome back to another 1O tier list video as it's time to update the tier list. The last one has been a while ago and with the latest Grouchy patch the game has changed quite a lot. The Grouchy patch and the veterancy changes have thrown everything a bit around and we're gonna go over all the divisions once more by nation, uh, starting with the West Germans. British, East Germans, French, Americans, and then the Soviets at the end, and putting everything from S to D tier. The tier list, as always, is focused around 1v1, and based on my observations from casting tournament games and playing myself, and seeing what is going on on the ladder in general. And obviously, let me know down below what do you think about my tier list, and what are your top divisions at the moment, and yep, yeah, consider leaving a like and a uh, f subscribe as well if you want to see more of these in the future. Let's get in here and let's start with the West Germans, which are in a bit of turmoil. We all know that the Leo 2s got changed quite a bit and people cry a lot on Reddit about how underpowered they are at the moment. But in my eyes, actually, that's not really the case. Like, I don't like that the Leo 2 got changed in the way it got and Leo 1s feel rather weak. But somehow, the second Panzer Grenadier is still really up here at the moment, both in ranked and in tournament games, because the Jaguar 2 is fantastic, the Leo 2 A3 actually is quite cost efficient, and the forward deploy at the moment is really important, and they get a lot of Ultra Magers. So I would actually put the second Panzer Grenadier in A tier. It's uh, The Mother is still not fantastic, and there's still some other things there, but also the double... Uh, a, uh, a Sidewinder F16, super great addition to this deck. So, second Panzer Grenadier here, currently up in A tier, uh, doing really well, like pretty high A tier in my eyes. It actually plays around towards S tier. If you look at the ladder, Homelander is playing it quite a lot still, and he is doing fantastically with it. And so, yeah, super strong division. I wouldn't quite say the same for the fifth Panzer at the moment, though. It feels a bit. Lifeless has lost a good couple important units like the Apache. Uh, dealing with rear issues is not as easy. It's still a decent deck, um, but the Leo 2s there are units that have to do the work, and they are solid, but it doesn't really have strong forward deployment. It doesn't have the Vulture Magers, and it doesn't have Panzerfaust 3s. It only has Panzerfaust 44s, which leaves its infantry quite lackluster when it comes to dealing with armor. And the Auto cannons are an issue there as well, more than with second. So I would put this division currently in C tier. It just doesn't feel cost efficient and it can't play the early game as well as the other divisions, which at the moment is pretty important. So C tier here, 4 fifth. I would like to see some buffs to this division in the future. Uh, it's still a decent division if you play okay and, like, and want to get into the late game with some bigger Leos, but it's lost a lot of its edge case strengths like the Apaches, which it had over other tank divisions and the other German divisions especially. So at the moment just feels like a worse second Panzer Grenadier for the most part. In A tier, we also find TKS in my eyes. TKS is pretty strong because of its forward deployment as well. It might actually have one of the strongest starts in the game because it doesn't just have forward deploy, it also has really strong uh, AMX-10RC there to follow that up with. It has forward deploy AA now since the latest patch, and it has a lot of cheap infantry to follow it up with, which other airborne divisions don't have, because they pay the extra tax on all their units. TKS doesn't do that, and the M48 now can survive some hits, which makes it a more interesting tank as well. So, I don't know if it's really much better uh, tank-wise the M48, but it's it's fits the deck a bit better, uh, so making TKS really, really strong rush, and then enough follow-up to get you through it. I haven't lost with this deck yet, and I felt like this deck really ruled. It also has a really strong air support tab now, with Genas for cheap helicopter hunting, with the F-104 HE bomber from for high-altitude bombing, with uh, LGB F-111, which can hit any strong targets, and cheap fighter planes as well. So, TKS at the moment, 
eight here in my eyes because of the super strong early game. Hard to beat. I had struggles whenever I played against it, and I had a really easy time usually when I played it, even beating other airborne do decks quite handily as well with it. And then Berlin Command was eight here last patch. With the latest patch, got nerfed a bit. Chieftain's nerf hit it a bit. Uh, the M1IP a bit less efficient, and the um, uh, Berlin Light Rifles got nerfed as well. Still strong with the Nighthawk, still has a pretty solid push, but it dropped from A to B tier in my eyes. Uh, it's still a deck, if you want to play it, you can absolutely have a solid time with it. So feel free to go for Berlin Command, but the forward deploy rush with the Foxes is still good. Uh, it's not as strong as other forward deploys though. Uh, if you run into loves or anything like that Berlin Command not as strong as it had been before so beat here here for the Berlin Command. And then we come to the British. The British start the first UK here which I would put into A tier as well. It still has decent forward deploy, doesn't have the Foxes anymore uh, which put it into S tier last patch together with the Chieftains. It still has cheap solid air support and the challengers and chieftains still give you pretty decent tank power as well. Uh, only issue is that your ATGM tap is not as great as in other decks. You have only Mil Milans and Swingfires, leaving you a bit vulnerable there. And the warrior, not the greatest little uh, IFV either, but it is an IFV and nonetheless, and a cheap one at that. So you get pretty decent stuff there still. The Skimitars are... Not quite Fox level, but they still give you nice cheap auto cannons at the beginning with forward deploy. Uh, just not as fast and not as abusable for the backline action as the Foxes. So it's not an S tier division, which it was in my eyes last patch. It's or close to it at least. It's lower end of A tier now, but it's still a division that if you want to have a good armored division with some forward deploy extras on top, then first UK is your go to here. And now we come to its brethren, which at the moment still sits up top here. The second UK with its SAS, with its challengers, with all the airborne that you can bring with it, including the new airborne pi uh, pioneers, which are just so gnarly uh, with their Kalgu stuff and all. Like, they come at S tier here as well. They are hard to beat. The Harrier, cheap cluster, and HE spam following it up. The, the division has such a strong early game and can follow it up for the rest of the game as well, thanks to the challengers that it gets. And that makes it such a scary deck. Like, where airborne divisions struggle to find the follow up, this division has the follow up. And SAS and airborne give it a similarly strong opener, making second UK really one of the top dog, in my eyes, currently the top dog division out there. So, second UK, no matter how much the internet cries how UK suffers, S tier in my eyes, it still performs in ranked, it still performs in every tournament we see it in, and it's such a scary division still. Um, yeah, it didn't get changed much either, like, first UK got a couple of nerfs, second UK didn't get that, it's still a really strong deck here. And then we come to the East Germans, we start with the hybrid division here, a bit between East Germans, and the, uh, the Soviets with the Berliner Gruppierung, which has a forward deploy thanks to Faltermakers, which is important at the moment. Um, it also has TADBs, which are pretty solid now as well, and TADBVs. T55s in it are pretty good as well. Though the artillery tab with the Bur you don't want to use the Buratino in it. The Uragan and the, uh, the Arm 70 is decent though. It's making this an A tier division in my eyes as well. Um, ahead of first UK even, though because of the infantry tab especially. Doesn't have many IFVs, only some BMP ones, which is a bit of a weakness there. Uh, air tab also one of the weaker ones. Helicopter tab pretty terrible. Um, those are the, the two big weaknesses of this division, but helicopters at the moment not so strong anyways. And its air tab still can be used offensively decently enough, and AA wise it has a book card, so it is covered there as well. Uh, yeah, it's it's a solid all-rounder division. It will most likely never go S tier. It won't ever drop below B tier either, though. And currently, I feel like it fits as a nice S uh, A tier division with strong forward deploy, especially thanks to the Falchermager 
uh, the East German ones with the special forces. Not quite as numerous as the West German ones in Second Panzer Grenadier, but pretty powerful thanks to their special force trait, uh, which they get instead. And high veterancy on those units also super important. Like the veterancy on infantry matters a lot. A division that doesn't have any forward deploy anymore is KDA, but it got a lot of other changes, which has buffed it a good bit. It was deed here here last time, because KDAs were overpriced. They are cheaper now, but so they are also in Berliner Gruppierung. Nice unit there now as well. It was indeed here. It went up to between B and C tier now in my eyes. T-62s are decent-ish. Now, T-54 is a decent-ish unit as well, slightly overpriced in my eyes, but just barely, like 60 or 65 points there instead of 70 points, and that thing is lovely. Um, but it can now still be one of the best airspam divisions. I like playing KDA at the moment. I absolutely like playing it. It has a strong air support tab, especially the seat plane with 60 ECM helping out, getting everything else through is fantastic. Uh, has high numbers there. And the KDA being uh, usable as, like, cheap infantry is nice. You need to use them with a CV close to them to have them do any damage. Their military police unit is really helpful, but not having the Spesnats anymore makes the early game a lot weaker. So you really have to play the long game with this deck. Its plan is pretty obvious to the enemy, and in the long game you will face heavy tanks often, and against those, if the enemy plays well, you're still gonna struggle. Like, if you get your AT planes through and you get your Smirch on target, then you can kill a lot. The Smirch especially being an important unit there. Kill, I killed a lot of challengers and M1A ones with it lately. But if the enemy keeps those moving and maybe gets your Smirch or something like it, then you are in trouble. So, KDA, better than before. Still not quite up there, but coming up. Uh, and yeah, infantry is back in business to some extent. So, C tier here for KDA. Cheaper KDA and reservist for sure help out. Then we come to 4th Modschützen. And that division at the moment is really, really scary. It's kind of like TKS, just for the East Germans. It has the cheap 4 deploy, being able to follow it up with units that don't have the 4 deploy tags, like the Modschützen. Uh, has some BMP 1s there, which it can be throwing around, has the T-55 AM-2s, which are pretty good tanks now, uh, and has the follow-up of a lot of cheap air as well. Not quite as good in the air tab as TKS, but the tanks are a bit better, um, and the forward deploy infantry is similarly in strength, so these two here, strong early game with enough follow-up to make it annoying for everybody else uh, to come back at, and the air and the Helicopter a bit better in four, uh, the air a bit better in TKS, helicopter a bit better in 4th here, as it has the cheap Mi 24Ds. So, 4th here in 8th here, really strong, really scary deck. Uh, absolutely back into business, was a low end division before and as well. But the current meta with T55s being nice support, follow up to the early start, really strong deck. Playing it on the ladder, always frustrating at the moment. Seventh, on the other hand, is a deck that just got revived as well. T-72s went up from super OP at this time where seventh was absolute S tier um, to highly overpriced. Now they are in a somewhat good spot again, putting seventh on the market again. It doesn't have strong forward deploy, which in the current meta is a big disadvantage. Uh, it doesn't have any spe uh, high veterancy infantry as well. It only comes with Modschützen, which lost their free veterancy uh, with the veterancy re rework. So they still have Resolute, which is nice, but they don't get the super killing part of all of it. So 7th has to rely on the uh, T-72, which are cost efficient again, but not easy to use. Like you see all the Reddit memes about how heavily underpriced it is supposedly. It's not really, because it's hard to use with the range deficiencies it has over other tanks and uh, you have to get close. It's not an easy playable deck, but if you can, and Team and Place for example showed that lately in the Water Monthly, it absolutely can work again. And then it snaps just as back in the day. You have a nice punching power. You have to play with Schwerpunkt Taktik with this deck, otherwise it just doesn't work. You need a good formation of T55s, T72s, BMP1s with Modschützen and enough 
AA and air support to to get that through, and then it can work. But you really need to play it that way. So seven in B tier, decent deck, just nothing super fancy. And then we come to fifth, Plinde, the French armored divisions. And yeah, I know we all talk about French bias and all, but this division actually lost it in my eyes because it has the issue it didn't really got changed much but napalm bomb was not as op the air cap has been nerfed over time quite a lot the mirage 3e not the overperformer at all anymore with eight hit points it gets one shotted by a lot of the stronger aa which makes it a lot weaker than other fighters um it doesn't quite perform there it's priced by now also decent for its performance for sure and mx 30s just thanks to the buff to all things and um, medium armored like all the m48s all the t55s and so on it just doesn't one shot as much anymore and it is not great in long drawn out fights with its nine frontal armor or 10 for the brennus it gets beaten by anything over a drawn out fight and Due to armor values going up, it will be in the drawn-out fight against everything. Uh, you still have Mephistos, you still have other stuff. I would say it's a bit above 5th Panzer because it has speed, but it doesn't quite have the punching power. It doesn't have anything high AP outside of the Mephisto with the hot 2 missiles, and that's a big issue. Your air tap not as strong anymore. Roland's decent, but not fantastic in the AA. Your infantry... Also got nerfed a bit with the the rocket launchers over the last couple of patches. So, yeah, the fifth plane day here. Actually, by now, is C tier division. The division that got a bit of French bias last patch here, though, that was this one here. The 11th parachutist. A division that was with KDA uh, la uh, really on the back end for a while. Uh, has come around quite a bit, though, as forward deploy does matter again a lot. Um, currently, and its buff that it received, first of all, it ca has a bit of AA again, like its fighters are pretty decent, and it, Mistral's are not coming in horrible, horrible numbers anymore, so you can win air dominance again, which was before super hard, because you just had too little AA in the deck, uh, but Mistral's now coming in this number, that's a big one, and then the ERC-90 is the other major factor. That was a pretty mediocre little vehicle leaving this division as the worst armor tap of all the airborne divisions which now one totally 180 because 35th and 82nd lost its tank taps and lost its tanks whilst the erc 90 now has m the max range of 2275 meters whilst still having its mediocre stealth making it basically an amx 10 rc for 80 points with a bit less frontal armor and a bit less penetration, yes, but it can snipe transports on those ranges. It can kill everything with side shots. It can beat out tanks with shorter ranges like the uh, T-55, like the Leo 1A1, and get away with it because it's a fast little tank. So ERC-90 making this division coming back into business. Special Forces with the Veteran C update also important, and it get a, gets a good couple of those in the Recon and the Infantry tab with the Legionnaire Paras and the SAS. So those really make 11th a strong contender again. It can't go in the long game because it still doesn't have anything that holds out there nicely. It doesn't have long-range AA, it doesn't have artillery, it doesn't have any tank that can win long drawn-out fights, but it has the power of the punch at the early game and it can snowball from there. And that's at the moment pretty scary, pretty strong, and that's why I would say this division in A tier I still beat it with TKS because you don't have that long staying power and you don't have that long range AA and so on. So I would put it a bit be behind these divisions here in A tier, but it's still an A tier division nonetheless in my eyes. And then we come to the division of the hour. A division that was a bit on the back end for a while now, but it has fully recovered and it has recovered spectacularly on the ladder especially. 82nd Airborne feels so strong with its forward deployment. The Love, also a nice addition. Who would have thought a patch where you take the tanks away from 82nd would be the one where it actually comes right into action. But 82nd Air 1 currently feels super scary. The paratroopers hard to beat because they 
have the shock. They have a couple of special forces with them as well. Uh, the love just so annoying everywhere where it goes. The air tap still quite strong. Uh, the A-10 now a pretty efficient plane again. Uh, and yeah, this division just strikes home at the moment. Hard to beat in the early game. And if you don't beat it there, then obviously you're going to struggle to come back. 82nd, obviously in the long game, without tanks now. You can beat it down with those. If you get a tank flop online, it will struggle to deal with it. Though, unlike the French or the Soviet Airborne, it still has high AP thanks to the TOW 2s. So it, the TOW 2 there and the Apaches and your AT planes can deal with heavy tanks as well if the enemy isn't careful. A skillfully played 82nd is really, really scary at the moment. On the other side, 3rd US has fallen from grace a bit. I still would put it into B tier here. But not having mech rifles, not having A-10s, plus M1s getting a bit more expensive. This division kernel, and this division not having any forward deploy leaves this deck struggling for the early game a lot. Not having any beefy strong infantry like the mech rifles anymore. A couple of engineers, yes, but your amount of beefy infantry is super low now and the Bradley infantry is just a bit cost inefficient the tanks are just a bit cost inefficient so the early game where at the moment a lot of the games get decided you are struggling hard and then yes you still punch hard in the late game but it's not the strong combined arms that you had before and even there you might be running out of infantry and then you're gonna struggle uh, you're gonna struggle to take back control over the map and when it, it wants also feel not at their best at the moment, cost efficiency wise. So only B tier here at the moment for the third. Um, yeah, and even on the lower end of that spectrum at the moment, which is surprising. This division was A to S tier for the last two years, but it really has fallen a bit here. Eight few S, kinda struggling the same fate now. I would put it into B tier as well, a division that has been A tier nonstop basically as well. A couple of moves into S here, so it's interesting to see the US here for the first time with some B tier divisions in that regard, uh, swapping it a bit around. But Ranger nerf last patch, similar to the Berlin Light Rifle nerf in my eyes, is what put it, puts it here. It's special forces not being as efficient anymore, and M1A1 also not being as efficient, plus the focus on forward deployment in the current meta again, putting it a bit lower. Uh, it still can punch everything. Uh, it's still one of the best all-rounders. Round, if you want to play ranked, 8 is a good point to start, but it's just not quite at the same level anymore as it has been before. So, yeah, 8th here in B tier. Uh, 27th, though, that division still got few nerfs. M1 IPs and M1 Abrams for them still pretty affordable. And it's still... Uh, 24th still has a strong... Air tap. It's not quite as OP as it had been before, as numbers have been lowered a bit, but F15 is a bit cheaper, and the LGBs are still hitting really, really hard. You still get National Guards for a relatively cheap point, Military Police for a relatively cheap point. So, as it had been before, the top dock above second UK, I would say it's on the low end of ATL now, uh, ST now, but it's still up there and I still, to change my opinion about it, I will have to see it lose more. But at the moment it still feels like the powerhouse got few nerfs yet. A couple will come, um, we'll see how it performs then. I would say it will fall down to 8 here most likely, but at the moment it still has all the tools and it does pretty well with them. A division that doesn't have all the tools and does worse because of it is 11 ACR. It's special funky tools like the Cyanide, like the M1A1, ACAF, and Co. All feel a bit overpriced. And that's why 11 ACR is the division where I actually could, would consider maybe putting it even into D tier at the moment. It's the hardest struggling division, though it's still just a bit too good for D tier in my eyes. It's the end of C tier. It still has all the tools you need. It's just not efficient at all at the moment. And it's air tap F16s at the moment struggling a bit. I hope they get buffed in the future. 
uh, just uh, the pr uh, speed upgrade there would be nice. F sixteen really feels slow for what they are, and that would be nice. Uh, also, maybe a couple more sidewinders, but yeah, the air tap not fantastic. The tank tap all M ones, which as we just talked about with third, not the cr most cost efficient tank right now. You get no strong ATGM which are pretty important at the moment outside of the Bradleys. The Bradleys are obviously good, but the M3A2 Recon also low availability plus extra price. Not the greatest efficiency unit there either. And the dismounted troopers are decent now, but also not gonna carry you. So, yes, C tier on the lowest end at the moment, the weakest division in the game in my eyes, 11th ACR. 119th at the other side is coming around again. It's a division that we have seen work now a good couple of times. Dark Neutron made it work in third place match of the league's season 0.5. Um, we saw it in Team Man's Hand doing pretty well as well. The TDUs and UDs are still hard to beat. Like, they are frustratingly hard to beat sometimes. And it has Spaznuts for a good, strong early game, which is important. The forward deploy here at the moment key, as I pointed out a couple, couple of times by now. And it also has strong, really strong uh, air tap for air dominance, like it can keep the sky clean if you use the SUs and the MiG-29s as well. MiG-29 cost efficient, SU-27 can hold out air supremacy for a long while, A8 have decent as well, it's just not quite cost efficient, same issue as of third, but better top end in my eyes and the better early game, putting it on the other part of B tier here, closer to A than to C. Though still B nonetheless, as it can be exploited, and if you lose the cohesion, if you lose a TAD or TADU, uh, TADU or BVK or so a bit too early, then the game plan can still falter, and that's its weakness, that it is a bit too reliant on one or two units, whilst divisions up here can take a couple of losses and still be fine with it. So, B tier here for 119th. And then we come to the Soviets jump into S tier in my eyes. 27th, TADBV feel really good, it got the BMP3s now, it has the Spetsford Vetka for decent enough for deploy uh, to win that uh, to win a couple of engagements there, get itself on the board, it has the all the good BMPs, it has all pretty strong infantry with the, with the RPG 26 and 27 that have good launchers, it also has a nice Artillery support tab, but yeah, the BV plus BMP3 plus strong motostralkies is really what makes this division at the moment so good. It has that combined arms that just can't push forward. It's A8 tab, also decent. The Strella uh, M3, A, uh, the upgraded Strella 10 there is a nice one. It's Good range against helicopter. It, the helicopters can't do much against this division at all. The tour there and the Tunguska helping out as well. And it's good enough against the airplanes to make them consider the life as well. Air tap, a bit of a weakness. Helicopter tap, not fantastic, but decent enough as well. So 27th, fast, still has the motorstroke medicine and all of that. And has the top end with the BVs, with the uh, Conqueror's M as well, which especially in mirror matches at the moment just shreds because you see so many TADBVs out there in ranked. Uh, so having that extra damage against anything with reactive armor is really nice. Conqueror's M with 23 penetration plus that effect, really, really strong at the moment. So 27th up here at the moment, pretty strong deck. 79th, I would put at the end of 8 here at the moment. The IZDs, the TADBVs, pretty good here as well. Fort deploy, a bit of an issue. Uh, same with 27th, obviously, but uh, I like the Spetsfire Fretka a bit more than the GRUs. So 27th, they're a bit better as well. And not having anything in fast armor transport like the BTRs is a bit of a weakness for 79th for sure now as well. Like, it's not as flexible as 27th due to that. And that in 1v1 matters a lot. The IZDs and the T uh, uh, 29th, with its high speed, good ATGM, are fantastic. The BMP2s are nice as well, so it has a strong core. It has a bit of a better air tap than 27th. Uh, and the Coupe AA is nice as well. So 79th, pretty strong deck, but I would say at 
the lower end of A tier here with First UK. First UK having the better start, having a bit worse follow up in my eyes. And yeah, the free veterancy on the IZD mattering a lot there for 79th. Pretty strong deck at the moment. 39th on the other side has fallen off of Grace, and it's great to see it next to 8th here. These two divisions have been dominating for like a year now, and it being finally in B tier, it getting the nerfs uh, is nice. It's still a great all rounder, it still can do everything that you wanted. It's still the deck that I would say is the best starter if you have a friend coming into Warno, but it's not OP anymore, and that feels just so good. No BMP3s anymore, a bit weaker in general all over the place. It just feels so good to have it down here. T80 BV is still good, so yeah, that's nice, but not having the cheaper option with the B really available makes the B at the moment not really feel important. No T62s anymore, so you, your low end is a bit weaker. You don't have 4 deploy, which at the moment matters a lot, so yeah, same issue as with 8th, just that you don't have special forces next to it either, so no rangers m m means that you struggle there a bit as well, leaving the 39th here in B tier at the moment. It's still a decent deck, but it's not quite up there anymore. And <laughs> funnily enough, it's the worst of the Soviets at the moment, which are over the, uh, overall doing really fantastic though. As 35th is another division with strong forward deploy. The BMBD2 gives you enough auto cannon and armor to get you through the game as well. Yes, not having tanks, not having the T64s, put it out of S tier, um, where it was up there with second UK for a while, because both have had 4 deploy plus nice follow-up with heavy tanks. It doesn't have the heavy tanks anymore, but it still has a fantastic air tap. It still has insane infantry. It has potentially the best infantry. I would say it has the best infantry tap when it comes to purely the infantry in the game. The Spaznats still rock everything. The Motostrucky Medis give you like nice long range. So this division still shreds any infantry fight that it gets into. It just doesn't have the long-range staying power that it once had, making it a bit vulnerable in the late game, but often enough it doesn't come to that. Like the amounts of times I have won in 3, 4, 5 minute games with this deck, because the enemy surrendered at that point because they lost 1,000, 1,200 points or so, is insane. It has enough air power na with enough MiG-29s and MiG-23s to get you through the game. Strong support aircraft there as well. Helicopters in enough flavors as well. It's not the most important at the moment, helicopters, but the Akula still can be nice and a good place, and so can be the um, the, MiG the Mi-24s. And yeah, the Spaznuts is just so, so key for this deck, together with the Desert Nikki, making it a super scary deck to face early on. And then in the late game, it can bunker in just enough in my eyes to make it 8 tier here and stay up there with like just a better start than 11th, which is why it is up here above it. So yeah, that's my tier list. Let me know down below what you think about it. And yeah, what would be your S tier and what would be your, your low end? As always, obviously, take a little bit of grain of salt. We haven't had the patch super long yet, but I wanted to get yourself, uh, you guys a bit of information about how it works out on the tournament scene at the moment, how it works out on the ladder. And yep, yeah, See you next time, guys. Bye-bye, and have a great day.